Hello, good morning and welcome to Holy Trinity Warmwell for morning prayer on Tuesday. We're using the Common Worship Daily Prayer Red Book or apps etc based on it. We're using the order for Advent, so if you are in the Red Book, at the beginning after prayer during the day, morning and evening prayer seasons and ordinary time, Advent is the beginning of the season section, morning prayer the first of the two. It's Tuesday the 11th of December. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all, to you be praise and glory forever. In your tender compassion the dawn from on high is breaking upon us, to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. A song of the King's glory. The earth is the Lord's and all that fills it, the compass of the world and all who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and set it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord or who can rise up in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up their soul to an idol nor sworn an oath to a lie. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord who is mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so to the back of our red book, or scrolling down to the Psalter, the appointed psalmody this morning, numbers 56 and 57. 56 open and closes with the refrain. So we say the glory be before we repeat the refrain for the second time for that one. 57 has repeated verses within it, so refrains haven't been added. So we simply say the psalm as it is and conclude with the glory be. <coughs> and each is uh, presented with a short prayer, which we may use in silence if we have it. Psalm 56 and 57. In God I trust and will not fear. Have mercy on me, O God, for they trample over me. All day long they assault and oppress me. My adversaries trample over me all the day long. Many are they that make proud war against me. In the day of my fear I put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise. In God I trust and will not fear, for what can flesh do to me? All day long they wound me with words. Their every thought is to do me evil. They stir up trouble, they lie in wait. Marking my steps, they seek my life. Shall they escape for all their wickedness? In anger, O God, cast the peoples down. You have counted up my groaning. Put my tears into your bottle. Are they not written in your book? Thinking my enemies turn back on the day when I call upon you. 
This I know, for God is on my side, in God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise. In God I trust and will not fear, what can flesh do to me? To you, O God, will I fulfil my vows, to you will I present my offerings of thanks. For you will deliver my soul from death and my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. God I trust and will not fear. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul takes refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings will I take refuge, until the storm of destruction has passed by. I will call upon the Most High God, the God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me and rebuke those that would trample upon me. God will send forth his love and his faithfulness. I lie in the midst of lions. People whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory over all the earth. They have laid a net for my feet, my soul is pressed down. They have dug a pit before me, and will fall into it themselves. My heart is ready, O God, my heart is ready. I will sing and give you praise. <coughs> awake, my soul, awake, harp and lyre, that I may awaken the dawn. I will give you thanks, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praise to you among the nations, for your loving kindness is as high as the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory over all the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And so back to morning prayer Advent for the canticle, A Song of the Wilderness. A Song of the Wilderness. Lift up your voice with strength, O herald of good tidings. The wilderness and the dry land shall rejoice. The desert shall blossom and burst into song. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weary hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to the anxious, be strong, fear not, your God is coming with judgment, coming with judgment to save you. Then shall the eyes of the blind be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame leap like a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The ransomed of the Lord shall return with singing, with everlasting joy upon their heads. Joy and gladness shall be theirs, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lift up your voice with strength, O herald of good tidings. Let's say to you our first Bible reading, Isaiah 46, 46th chapter of Isaiah which isn't quite as daunting as it sounds, at least not in terms of its length. Isaiah 46. Bell bows down, Nebo stoops, their idols are on beasts of, and cattle. These things you carry are loaded as burdens on weary animals. They stoop, they bow down together, they cannot save the burden but themselves go into captivity. Listen to me, O house of Jacob, all the remnants of the house of Israel. You have been born by me from your birth, carried from the womb, even to your old age I am he. Even when you turn grey, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear, I will carry and will save. To whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me as though we are, were alike? Those who lavish gold from the purse and weigh out silver in the scales. They hire a goldsmith who makes it into a god and they fall down and worship. They lift it to their shoulders, they carry it. They set it in its place and it stands there. It cannot move from its place. If one cries out to it, it does not answer or save anyone from trouble. 
Remember this and consider, recall it to mind, you transgressors. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is no one like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things not yet done, saying my purpose shall stand and I will fulfill my intention. Calling a bird of prey from the east, the man for my purpose from a far country, I have spoken and I will bring it to pass. I have planned and I will do it. Listen to me, you stubborn of heart, you who are far from deliverance. I bring near my deliverance, it is not far off, and my salvation will not tarry. I will put salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. <coughs> we continue in Isaiah. And if you do listen from time to time, you'll know that I'm finding it quite confusing chopping and changing, dipping and diving from the different parts. The opening is a warning and a preparation for exile. The middle section is a warning about maintaining their religious and ethnic identity in exile. And the third is the re-establishment and encouragement and hope for the re-returning to the promised land and the re-establishing of the temple. And I'm not sure, but we're probably about in that middle section here because this is effectively about idols. And then there's a very brief mention about a bird of prey from the east. <coughs> Who is this Cyrus or Cyrus? I'm not sure why he's called a bird of prey. It might have been the symbol of those peoples. It might have been what his name meant or it sounded like a bird of prey. It might have been a description of his um, stooping, powerful, scaremongering dexterity as a leader, military leader. In our opening, a couple of verses, beautiful I guess, they match much more closely in the Hebrew, but they look fairly matchy at the moment and the, in English. And <coughs> There's this very clever balancing and mirroring how the idols of God's people, I guess, although it might be the idols of those who've taken them, that's one of the problems with some of these Isaiah passages. We're not quite sure whether God is talking to his own people or the Gentiles, but it would stand either way. These idols have been carried and the animals are stooping, hardly able to carry the idols, so the idols themselves aren't able to carry anything. <clears throat> the second um, mirroring commentary is from God, listen, O house of Jacob, the remnant of Israel, who have been born by me from your birth and carried from the womb. In other words, they have a calling like the prophets. The prophets at that time used to open their oracles with a similar expression, born from your birth, carried in the womb. Even to your old age I am he, I'll carry you when you turn grey. <clears throat> this idea of a child being carried and a frail person in old age also being carried. So there's a tenderness about this carrying as opposed to brute beasts carrying these idols that aren't able to carry themselves. I will carry and I will save. Beautiful little couple of verses. Then we have a description of how idols are made to underscore, underline the difference between the God of Abraham and uh, these handmade statues. If it cries out, if anyone cries out to it, it doesn't answer. Those lavish gold from the purse, they hire a goldsmith who makes it into a God, and they fall down and worship. They lift it and carry it. <coughs> I guess the writers might have seen the idols, both of those, the people who've oppressing, who are oppressing them and the idols that they took with them being carried and it must have just struck them, those that believed on the one true God in their eyes, the creator God, just how different the two deities in the comparison with, the, with the, the great one God of gods and these other deities that had been created, which it should be noted did possess magic and were the location or the locus, uh, focus <coughs> of the spirits of the families and the peoples that took them on. So they did have a supernatural power, capacity, 
and things did change as a result of people making offering to them, having setting up these sort of cults and ways of worship and things that they did for these idols that were made. So it wasn't uh, quite as I don't know whether banal, but they they were actually objects of true fear, veneration, and power, which I think we have to remind ourselves of today. But then we have this passage. <clears throat> Remember this and consider: I am God. There is none other who who is like me. That's a example of a Hebrew writers saying the same thing twice. I will fulfil my intention, calling a bird of prey from the east. This is that idea of this Kairos character from Persia to overthrow um, the Chaldeans who had taken God's people to Babylon. And then the conclusion: Listen, you who are stubborn of heart, I bring near my deliverance. I will put salvation in Zion. May that be an encouragement to us, as those words remind us of the words Jesus gave to his disciples as he sent them out two by two. Heal the sick and tell them the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So to our second reading, 1 Thessalonians 2, from 1 to 12. The first 12 verses of the second chapter of the first book of Thessalonians 1, 2, 1 to 12. You, yourself, you yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain, but though we had already suffered and been shamefully maltreated in Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as, our, as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse, tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. You remember our labour and toil, brothers and sisters. We worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and God also, how pure, bright, upright and blameless our conduct was towards you believers. As you know, we dealt with each one of you like a father or with his children, urging and encouraging you and pleading that you should lead a life worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. <coughs> So this appears to be a sort of autobiographical uh, setting out of the facts <coughs> as uh, Paul, I guess it is, writing to the Thessalonians, remembers his first contacts with them. And uh, it uh, appears to be something of a treatise of how he is and how he acts as a refutation against uh, Gossip. One can imagine people saying, well, he came, as others no doubt were, seeking to make money by speaking to them what they wanted to hear. And he effectively says that he made his own money. He was a tent maker working night and day. I think that relates to his labour to uh, keep himself in board and lodgings rather than his ministerial work, although it, he may mean that. But he says that they might not be a burden while they proclaim the gospel, so you've got one sort of work mentioned. And so I suggest it's, there's, that distinction is there to let us know that the one is uh, to feed himself. And then he also speaks about taking the message proved by God, not to please mortals, not with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed. <clears throat> and then that line that uh, reminds us of God's caring of God's people from Isaiah carrying the young and the old. We were gentle among you like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. And we also pick up something of the trials that Paul faces in his travels, although the Philippians is one of those books like Thessalonians, Thessalonians 
that uh, seems to be one of the more sort of supernatural, powerful, uplifting, end time type books. Letters, he obviously had a tough time there uh, earlier on, whether amongst the Christians, or the Jews, or those of neither faith. But we're told he was shamefully maltreated at Philippi. Maybe there were some wolves in sheep's clothing, as it were, who uh, upset the apple cart and so he had to flee. Why he's making so sure of his own testimony here. These may have been the claims made against him in Philippi. Nevertheless, may we, like him, lead a life worthy of God as we are called with all creation into his own kingdom and glory. And so, as we are reminded in our responsory back in morning prayer, now it is time to awake out of sleep, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed, for the night is far spent. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. For the day is at hand, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. <coughs> The song of Zechariah. I look towards the east, O Jerusalem, and see the glory that is coming from God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham. To set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Look towards the east, O Jerusalem, and see the glory that is coming from God. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, Son, Spirit, three in one, that you do carry us. You long for us to recognise that relationship that you have with us. We thank you for it and we pray that today we would not be tempted to burden ourselves or that we rely on to carry us through life with the burden of idols that are perhaps at best a dis distraction and at worst a damnation or abomination. And so may we by your spirit and through your blood be enabled to live lives worthy of you and you may draw people into your kingdom in, through and despite us. In this day, as we live in this season, awaiting your coming, <coughs> both as child and as judge from Operation World, Hispanics are now the United States' largest minority we pray for effective discipleship of the nearly 50 million that live there. We thank you for the connection that many have with their homelands. And we pray
pray that you will use them as effective in mission. We thank you that Christianity is flourishing amongst Native Americans. There were 20 million before Europeans arrived, but by 1890 only 250,000. Outrageous. Not that it had anything to do with me, but there were those that flew the flag of Christ in that genocide. And so for what is worth, and as far as I'm able, I apologize and I'm deeply, deeply sorry. But thank you, Jesus, that you are giving an identity and worth, a sense of belonging and hope to many. Pray for full reconciliation of native and immigrant peoples, though I have to say I can't see how that could possibly work as one were peripatetic and the other settles. There's been so much hurt and destruction theft, desecration. Thank you for Bible translation. We pray your blessing on indigenous gospel movements within the Native American communities. We pray that will extend also to those of Alaska. <coughs> We pray that all this work will be carried out with great contrition. That's the word. Penitence, humility, sorrow, grace, love, generosity. Thank you, you have risen with healing in your wings. From Christian Action Research and Education, we pray about the growing prevalence of fake news and the potential for social media to influence people's beliefs and attitudes for good or ill. It's being increasingly regarded as being a real threat to the integrity of democratic institutions and the voices of truth. We pray that as Christians we are seen to be unknown to stand for truth. From Green Christian, the Nissan Leaf electric car has won approval from German regulators who act as a mobile battery backstop so that power can flow from the grid to the car when charging, but also from the battery back to the grid when required. The service can help stabilise the power grid and minimise peaks and troughs while providing a source of income for Leaf owners. And Nissan is experimenting with a similar system known as V2G in the UK in partnership with OVO Energy or OVO Energy and is the lead partner in the government project to install 1,000 to V2G charge points for business fleets. Thank you for that extraordinary innovation. Pray that it may continue to grow and catch on and that electric vehicles become commonplace. And in our benefit cycle of prayer, we give thanks for all who give time and skills to the common life, praying that others will be inspired to join them. Thank you for our church membership for Susan, Debbie, Ellery, Debs, Richard, Pam, and Tony, Brian and Chris, Tim, Moira, Liz, Anne, Alex, Lucy, Patrick, Paulette, Ruth, Leslie, Ellie, Charles, Edward and Inga. We thank you for all that they give to the church as half of the membership in Broad Main. We pray your blessing of health, our prosperity, salvation, healing and deliverance on them. And we pray that you draw us with them on into fuller experience, understanding of you and ourselves as we pray, serve and study, and in fellowship, worship, walk and witness. We pray that we would be seen to be and known to be, that you would be seen and known to be our motivation, our inspiration. And the people that we are be seen, recognised, be becoming more what you would have us be, and that in that transition others will be drawn onwards into a fuller expression of themselves as they recognise your calling your designs on and for their lives.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility, that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.